Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at temporary power-ups in Game Maker Studio. Now, I'm going to be following on from the tutorial I did on platformers, but this method I'm using is going to be pretty universal, and the concepts that I'm going to be teaching you should be helpful no matter what genre of game you're working with, in terms of applying a temporary effect to a player or something else in your game. So, I've added a few new elements since uh, we left off with our tutorial last time. As always, this project will be available for download from the description. But uh, let's just take a look at what's new. So, as you'll see, there's this little blue square sitting over here. This is object underscore obj underscore power up. That's going to be our object that we're going to collide with, and it's going to give us a power up. We're going to increase our jump speed for roughly about five seconds. So, all I've done is I've added um, a new sprite for the power-up, um, a new object for the power-up, and also a, a second sprite for our player, which I've called SPR underscore player underscore B, where um, the player is blue. So whenever the player is affected by this power-up, we're going to turn the player blue, just so that you know that the power-up is active. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our player object, obj underscore player, and uh, in the create event where we established our variables in the previous episode on platformers, um, you'll see at the moment we have jump speed set to 7 at the start of the game. Now what we're going to do is simply change the structure of this a little bit to allow us to add a power up into the game that will change that jump speed without us having to mess about too much in the step event or change anything else that's going on. This is why it's important to use variables to refer to numbers and not simply use hard numbers in the code where we mechanically apply our jump and instead refer to them as variables because it gives us the freedom to do systems like this which should become clear in a moment so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this jump speed line here now obviously we still need that but first of all I'm gonna establish two new variables I'm gonna establish jump speed underscore normal equals seven which is what we had before and jump speed underscore power up which I'm going to set equal to I don't know something bigger um, we'll go with 10 uh, so then I'm going to type jump speed which is our original variable I'm going to just set it to be jump speed underscore normal now as you can see, I mean you might think it's redundant me doing that, why not just set that to 7, why do I need that to be referring to that? Well it just makes it easier at this point, so now if I ever want to change our normal jump speed, all I have to do is go into the create event of our player and change this one number, and it'll ricochet throughout the rest of the code because uh, that uh, jump speed uh, picks up that normal and then that that normal, that variable, and then that variable is picked up later in our step event where we're handling all of our actual movement code. You see here where it's minus jump speed, it's taking whatever that number is. So it means we don't have to mess with the nitty gritty that we've already set up in all of our rest of our mechanical code. We can just, in our initialized variables, we can just play around with the settings in here. It makes it much easier when you're trying to tweak settings and things like that. Variables, totally underrated. And now what you'll see is that we now that we have this jump speed underscore power up, you can imagine all we need to do is whenever we pick up a power up or do anything, all we need to do is set jump speed to be equal to that for a while. And then we only need to change that one number to affect what that is. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. So you can go ahead and close this and close this. Because now the next thing we're going to do is set up our actual power up object. So if we edit our power up object, it'll be j underscore power up, and we're going to add an event. We're going to add the event when we have a collision with the player. See, this is when we actually want to use the collision event, when we actually want to have a real collision, when we want to be overlapping with something. So when we collide with the player, go ahead and drag in another code object. What we're going to do is we're going to apply an effect to the player. So what we want to do is say with open bracket obj underscore player put a gap in there press enter and then just open and close pair of curly braces now inside these braces here what's going to happen is whatever code we put into here is going to run as if it were running from the player object and not this object so it allows us to affect other objects from the events of 
other objects. So when you know the player collides with this power up with object player, we're just going to say jump speed, not jump speed, jump speed equals, and you'll notice an, an important thing to remember inside of a with uh, statement as well, is that anything that you do in here, because it's running as if it were running from this object, um, it has access to all of that object's variables. And, it, and importantly, it doesn't have access to any variables you've declared, like here or above it, you know, outside of that, inside the power up object. It only has access inside of here to the variables that this object knows about. Just something to be aware of. So we want to set jump speed to be equal to jump speed underscore power up. And then we want to set alarm open square bracket zero close square bracket to equal about 300. Now the alarm is going to be what turns our jump speed back to normal. So this is the temporary part of our temporary power up. We're going to set up an alarm and then when it goes off, we're going to set our jump speed to be normal again. And we're setting it to 300. So 300 frames from now, alarm zero will be triggered. And that's an event that will go off inside object player, which we'll set up in a moment. 300 frames at 60 frames a second is about five seconds. So. The only other thing we needed to do was to set our player sprite to be uh, our new our new player sprite, the, the one that's affected by the power up. So I'm going to say sprite underscore index equals spr underscore player underscore b semicolon. So at the moment we've applied pretty much a permanent change. We've said jump speed equals jump speed power up and uh, sprite index equals this. And we've set an alarm, but that alarm doesn't do anything yet. So we, we've made all the changes and we've given that power up to our player. It'll increase his jump speed to whatever jump speed power up was, which I think we set to 10. So it'll go from seven to 10. And then because we don't want to like keep doing, doing this continuously and we don't want to keep setting this alarm continuously, otherwise it'll never go off while we're colliding with the power up. We want to actually get rid of this object after we've done that collision. So I'm going to type instance destroy outside of this with bracket. So that will destroy the power up object, object after we've collided with it. Go ahead and close that. Now, if we open up the player object again, in the event section, we want to add event alarm alarm zero because that's the alarm we referenced. You can have up to 11 alarm events per object, but um, we only need alarm zero for this one. Again, dragging a dragging a code action. So now, when our time is up, all we need to do is basically set our code to be normal again, um, our jump speed to be normal again. So we type jump speed equals jump speed underscore normal, which was the variable we set up in the first place. And then sprite underscore index equals spr underscore player, and then that'll set everything back to how it was before. And that's really all there is to it. So now, hopefully, nothing goes wrong. I should be able to demonstrate. I come up here, and I jump onto this power up. You can see we've turned blue, and we can jump way higher than we jumped before. And then that runs off after about five seconds. And now we're jumping the same height we used to jump. And the power up is gone as well. So yeah, that's that. That's how to create a temporary power up effect in either a platformer or pretty much any game. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that was useful and I'll catch you next time. See you guys.